Hey guys, welcome back to another video on Gamers Edition and in today's video I'm going to show you the different fan configurations you can use in your all-in-one liquid cooler. Okay, so this is an all-in-one liquid cooler, or they commonly say AIO, you're short for it. So you got the pump or the block, they're usually the same area. Most of the time they are where the block is or sometimes they're in the radiator. But you got the block, so which actually makes contact with the CPU and then you got your tubes and then do a radiator. Your radiator is only here to cool the air, to cool the liquid, sorry, in the AIO. So you really want to make sure that you get it right. So there are three configurations that you can use. You can either have a push setup, so there are fans at the front, which are pushing air through the radiator. And the main disadvantage to this is that there is quite a bit of resistance between it, like because there are fins, and the air has to go through the fins and not much of it can actually make its way to the other components such as a RAM or even your graphics card. So you can either have a pull configuration which is, like, which is actually pulling air through and exhausting it all over your components. But the disadvantage to this is that it won't get as much air because once again it's resisted, uh, resisted? It's, <laughs> it's being resisted by the radiator. So you can get both of us you can be, you can get best of both worlds obviously so you can have a push and pull so the fans at the front are bringing fresh air in pushing it through but then it's going to meet resistance to the radiator so the fans at the back are assisting it by exhausting it all over the other components this basically gives you less resistance and more airflow which leads to cooler, cooler components so i'm going to show you the difference in temperatures between push pull and push and pull. Okay, but first we are gonna have to set some parameters. So I'm gonna keep the fans at thirty percent, and the CPU. I'm going to use Ryzen Master to actually keep it at bay. So I'm going to use this setup here. I'm gonna keep it at four thousand megahertz and at one point one five volts. So therefore, it won't keep fluctuating, and you know it won't give more voltage. It'll be set. So then it can only give that much voltage under heavy load or just give that much voltage. And the main reason I'm using Verizon Master as well is because built in it has a temperature graph and uh, a speed graph of how fast each core is running. So right here. This will be very useful for the benchmarkers and how it, how hot the CPU is getting. Alright, so first things first. We are going to do the push and pull configuration, but first I need to set the parameters, so I'll see you back in a few seconds. Okay, so I am in the BIOS now. So now I just gotta set the fan curves appropriately, like, I'm gonna keep it at 30%, so therefore the fans aren't ramping up and ramping down, which could affect the results. For example, if I want to keep it the same, then if I'm doing pull, pull, for example, and the fans ramp up, obviously it's going to bring more airflow than if it was out the front, if it was a doing a push configuration, and then the fans just stayed the same. It would not make sense. So we have to make this so it's an even test and a fair test, so we can actually get proper results. Okay, we are now back in Windows, and it is all looking okay. So the by the way, I'm, I'm not sure if I mentioned, I'm using an AMD Ryzen 5 3600. So I've set it to 4 gigahertz at 1.15 volts. And the GPU, I've set that to its just standard profile. So it's in its game mode. So no overclocks, no crazy fan curves, no voltage, any, no voltage crazy stuff. It's just stock. Now, I'm using Ryzen Master also because it has a graph. But if you're using an Intel platform and you want to try this out for yourself, then you should use this software called CPU ID or from Hardware Monitor. Now, I did some testing off camera and these are identical pretty much. So it says 48 degrees for the CPU right there and it says 48 degrees on the on Ryzen Master. Let's see, oh wait, hold up, it's going up 49, so that would have picked up as well. 54, what the hell? Oh, 50. I think it's just a bit slow. Oh, the, the camera. Ah, oh, the camera! No, the camera not fo focus. Okay, good. So, 49 degrees. 48 degrees. I think I think CPU ID might be a bit slower. That's all the more reason to use Ryzen Master then. 
And it also has a graph and all that other stuff that I explained earlier. Okay, so to actually check the temperatures, we are going to gonna have to hit it with a load. So I'm gonna use Cinebench uh, R20. And it's just good benchmark up for CPUs. Why is it not loading? Can you load please? Load please? I'm doing it. Oh, it loaded. Oh, I didn't see the taskbar. Okay, so Cinebench R20. And I probably should have checked the. Uh, I probably should have checked the idle left. Dang it! Oh, okay, well, I'll leave it to sit for a bit. I'll leave it to, for five minutes, I'll say. And then. Oh, come on, camera. Alright, I'll leave it for five minutes, check the idle temps, and then see what it is like under load. Alright. Okay, so. I've let idle for a bit. Uh, the same profile, game mode, profile, everything. And it's sitting around about 51, 52 degrees Celsius, which honestly is not great, but if you look at in Task Manager, Ryzen Master sucks back like a whole 10% in CPU usage, which is quite a lot for just an app that monitors. But then, it, oh, again, you do mess around with CPU voltages and speed and a lot of other stuff. Okay, so I'm going to close, actually I'll leave it open, leave open Task Manager, and we're going to open Cinebench R20 once again, don't forget that it's there, and we're going to hit it with a load, and we'll see how the temperatures rise, okay, so it's okay now, yep, it's still running, okay, what's that, 68, 66, it's going up, it's going up, yeah, and the score, don't look too much at the score. Obviously, if this were to be like a maximum score test, then I would actually like close all the apps and overclock it crazily. But we're just trying to see how much push pull configurations or configurations for the AIO actually uh, change the temperatures. Okay, and I'll cut the camera back when it's done. Okay, so Cinebench just finished. And Ryzen Master crashed while I was trying to look at the temperatures, but it's okay. We still get we still did get a solid 15 seconds. So the highest it got apparently was 68 degrees. Oh wait, oh we got 69. So oh, nice. So 69 degrees. That is the highest it got. But as far as uh, as far as I can see, it only got it for like less than a second. Oh right there. So. For a full second, it topped out at 69 degrees. But majority of the time, it was 68. So we will bear that in mind. But now, it's time to take this apart and do push only. Oh, and the score was slightly higher than what it was last time. Sick. Okay, so I have now done it. The fans, as you can see, are not here. The glasses uh, actually tinted black slightly, but. There are no fans here. I've removed them as well. And you might think, why, why'd you why did you remove them for? Why did you not just unplug them for? The reason is that I doubt that people are doing this configuration, you know, put um, a push configuration with their AIO. They wouldn't like, just have fans at the back, just there. And also that would add to resistance because the frame would actually interfere with the air that's trying to push over to the cooler components. So that's why. But anyway, I idle, I boosted up and now I left it for about 5 minutes as well. I idle, the temps are pretty much the same, 52 degrees. So, I guess now we should hit it with a load. From Cinebench R20, if I can find it, there it is. It's really hard to see through the camera. But, okay, and um, I shall cut to when it is now done. Okay, I was slightly lying, we do have to check the temps well. It is running, if Ryzen Master would open please. Okay, uh, 70 degrees. I forgot what we got last time. But 70 degrees, I mean, eh, that's okay con uh, considering we are only pushing air through. And it isn't, re it isn't really reaching the cooler, the components that need to be cooled, such as the RAM and GPU, but 70 degrees, uh, high 70s actually. 70 degrees. Isn't too bad. I mean, it is worse than push and pull, but come on, seventy degrees. Okay. Oh, and test just finished. Yeah, we kept we was kept at four gigahertz, and the score went down. I mean, this isn't really about score, but yeah. Okay, 
So now I've got to put these fans in and take out these two fans. I, I'm going to have to leave this one here even though it isn't touching the radiator or anything. We are going to have to leave it there. So we'll just swap it. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we've, uh, the front fans are removed and we only have the rear fans. Unfortunately, I couldn't, I didn't test the idle temperature and I wasn't recording, but, and I don't have time to do it again. But, however, but, and however then, the hottest we got was 68 degrees. Okay, so, those are the results. So, if you are stuck between doing a push or pull configuration with the AIO and you want the best performance with the least amount of fans, and you don't really care too much about aesthetics, then do a pull configuration. There you go. But, if you do have a couple of extra fans and you want even better performance, then do a push and pull configuration and you get the additional points of it looking really cool. Why did that fan stop? I mean, it's working now, it's fine. So, that's pretty much it. So if you like this video, then like it. And if you want to support the channel and you like what we're doing around here, then subscribe with notifications on so you get notified when we make a new video. But that's it really, and I'll see you in the next video.